So, in a moment, what I would like you guys to do is set up a galvanic cell and make some observations about it. Uh, so that way you guys can kind of know what they are and also start thinking about how they compare against electrolytic cells. I've put all the stuff that you need for our galvanic cell uh, next to the bench, uh, next to the periodic table. So only the bench that's directly in front of me, not the one that's next to the door that goes outside. That's my level twos. When you guys go to that bench, uh, one of the first things you are going to need to grab are two beakers. Two beakers. They look like that. Um, the other thing you're going to need to grab are electrodes. So we're going to put some electrodes in there. You should grab one copper one and one zinc one. Are we good so far? So we're going to need two electrodes. The other thing you're going to need are two wires. Uh, the wires have an alligator clip on one side and a plug on the other side. So the alligator clip is to attach to the electrodes and then the plugs are to put into a voltmeter. So what you should have connecting the two up is your voltmeter. So we're at V. We'll figure out the number later. Um, and you're going to plug that in so that way the voltmeter is attached to each of those electrodes. Now just FYI so you are aware, the copper electrode should be going to the positive uh, section of the voltmeter, which is the red port, and the zinc should go into the negative end of the electrode, which is the black port. If you get it the wrong way around, what you're going to see is that your voltage will be negative. Are you okay with that so far? All right, now let's talk about the solutions you're going to grab. There are three different bottles of solutions you're going to grab. The first one you're going to grab is your copper sulfate. Now, which of these two beakers do you think the copper sulfate is going to go into? The one with the copper. It's a nice little matching game. And that's aqueous. The other solution you're going to get is zinc. You're going to have to double check. I think it's zinc uh, sulfate as well. Yeah, it's zinc sulfate. So in the other beaker, you will have your zinc sulfate. And that's also aqueous. Now there's one more thing that we need. First off, when I look at that circuit, is that circuit completed? No. I don't have a complete wire. You see it starts and then it stops and then there's no way to link these two cells up. So what you are going to do is you're going to make what's called an ion bridge. The way you're going to do that is by taking a uh, paper towel and you're going to soak that paper towel with an ionic solution. Doesn't matter which ionic solution, I have chosen uh, sodium chloride as our uh, ion bridge, but then that completes our circuit. So this would be sodium chloride, and that's our ion bridge. And that's what it should look like. So I want you guys to have a chance to set up the galvanic cell. This is what a galvanic cell looks like. I want you guys to make some observations. Um, and yeah, just have a chance to explore what they do. And then I will walk through what is the achieved criteria. Sound good? All right, I'll grab the goggles, because those are important. Hair needs to be tied up. Um, make sure your sleeves are pushed up. Um, and everything you need is on that bench. I'll leave this up so you guys know what you're doing. All right. So, what did you guys notice from making that galvanic cell? Nothing happened. See some bubbles? 
Mm-hmm. I don't expect you guys to see anything oh, quite yet. Uh, the thing with galvanic cells is that they do require a little bit more time for you to make those observations. Um, I won't talk about the observations today because they are the, I believe, merit criteria. Um, so we'll hold off on doing that. But the main thing I wanted you guys to notice when we hooked up our galvanic cell, I'm just going to move my document camera over so you can see it. Um, so here's my galvanic cell. And the thing you should be noticing is that in this case, I am producing voltage. And that's why that voltmeter is here. I have no power supply hooked up. That's something that's also really key with that. And so nothing is providing energy for this. It is all being produced by the redox reaction alone. Wow. Um, you guys have seen this redox reaction occur before. Um, if I put a piece of zinc into some copper sulfate, you'll notice that over time that the... Um, the, the, the zinc will start to coat with some copper uh, and it will start becoming uh, less and less blue. So that, isn't, it's, that in its own is a redox reaction. Uh, the thing that's different here is that I have that same redox reaction occurring, but the difference is I've actually separated the two halves of that redox equation so I can force the electrons to go in a specific pathway. So because I'm forcing the electrons to go in a specific pathway, I can then utilize that for energy. So that's how we're making these guys up. The galvanic cells are just batteries. So everyday batteries that you guys are using, your cell phone, all those things are redox reactions that are occurring. We just uh, split the reduction and oxidation half so that way um, I can, like I said, control that flow of electrons and thus create my electrical energy, which is really, really cool. All right. I will just go through the material for the achieved uh, so you guys can practice that and then I will go through the merit and the excellence on Thursday when I see you guys next. Um, first thing we need to do is talk about processing and how do we pull the information out. So this one's a lot more complex than the electrolytic cell. Electrolytic cell was straightforward, you just figured out the ions and you went back to the elements. In this case, I'm going to have one that's going from ion to element and one that's going from element to ion. So we have to be careful about that. So when I'm looking at each one of these reactions, if I want to break this down, I actually have a pair. And we can find it on my sheet as well. So in this case, I have the copper two ion and copper. And in this combo, I have the zinc ion and the zinc metal. Now remember that I said that yellow is kind of what I'm using as my processing color. So that way we know how to decode my questions. Are we okay so far? All right. Like I said, this one is not as simple as going from ion to element. One is going to do one and the other one's going to do the other. The way I figure that out is by using the standard reduction potentials. So, I'm going to be looking for copper, and I see that copper has a standard reduction potential of 0 0.34, and I'm going to be looking for zinc, and I see that zinc has the standard reduction potential of negative uh, 0 0.76. What then gets assigned as reduction and oxidation depends on the standard reduction potential. The higher they are on this list, the easier they are to reduce, and thus they will be the reduction reaction. So I'll make that note on my resource sheet. Higher the standard reduction potential, easier to reduce. Hold up. So if I'm looking at these two choices, will it be the copper 2 ion or the zinc 2 ion that will be reduced? Copper, because it's higher on that list. So this one will be my reduction reaction. And the zinc will be my oxidation reaction. We good so far. So that's how I process that. So, first thing I need to do for the achieved is I need to identify which species is being oxidized and which is being reduced. So, 
In this case, my copper uh, two ion is going to be reduced to copper. Reduction still happens at the cathode. And then when it comes to my oxidation reaction, I have the reverse, I have the zinc metal becoming the zinc ion. And that's my anode. So something we need to keep in mind is that for the reduction, we're going from ion to element, and for the oxidation, we're going from element to ion. So we got to watch out for that. It's not as simple as the electrolytic. Crap. Right, this. Yeah. Good. So just watch out for that. It's not as simple anymore. You have to use that standard reduction potential to figure out which one's which. Okay? So the two ion thing is only from oxidation. Only the, the, you still use the same rules for oxidation. So in this case, I'm going from positive two to zero. That's reduction. In this case, I'm going from zero to positive one. That's oxidation. So we still have one oxidation reaction, one reduction reaction. It's just, we're not, both reactions aren't going from ions to elements. This one's going from ion to element. This one's going from element to ion. So we're just going to watch out for that. For these two? For the zinc or the zinc metal? Because the zinc is going from positive 2 to 0. Or sorry, going from 0 to positive 2. That's an oxidation. So remember how I was saying when we look at this sheet, one reaction should always go forward, and that's showing my reduction reaction. And one reaction should always go backwards, and that's showing my oxidation reaction. It was simpler when I was giving you just ions, because when I gave you something like fluoride, you went from the fluoride ion back to fluorine. So you still have one going forward, one going backwards. It's just now you're dealing with two positive ions. Are we okay? All right. So first thing for a cheat is identifying which one's which. That's probably the trickiest of the bits. Um, the next thing that you need to then do is just your basic kind of stuff that we've been talking about before, giving me definitions. So reduction is uh, gain of electrons. Um, or you could say that the oxidation number has decreased. Oxidation, we have uh, loss of electrons. And I'm leaving myself a little bit of space because when I go in for the merit, I'll give my specifics. Oxidation number has increased. That's the other thing we needed to get for the achieved, is just the definitions for both of those again. The other thing you need to get for the achieved is just telling me that this is a spontaneous reaction. Or you can tell me that it uh, gives energy, makes energy, provides energy. All of those would work. Are we good? I'm happy to do the merit next ones if you guys want, because I know you guys already have the foundation of what to expect with these write-ups. Um, it's more or less the same thing when it comes to observations, oxidation numbers, half equations, balancing it, calculation for E-cell. So I can either do it now or I can do it on Thursday, whichever you guys feel is the better option. What I'm saying now? Any other votes? Now, later? Or do you guys want to practice some of these to the achieve first? Practice to the achieve first? Okay, let's do that. Um, I do want to make a note that I do have practice questions. Um, but what I've done is I've written them in the um, the shorthand version to communicate um, galvanic cells. So just so you guys are aware when we see it on the, the board, what to expect. So what you're going to see is 
something that looks like this. On the practice questions that I provided for you guys. So just so you guys are aware, this is how I'm going to show your practice questions from now. Other times I might be mean and not give it to you. Um, this is known as your standard cell diagram. It's just a shorthand way for us to communicate across uh, galvanic cell questions. You won't need to write this on the assessment, but I often use this for practice questions. Uh, some things to keep in mind is that the first half of this equation, or the setup, that's your oxidation half. And the second half is your reduction. No, this is just how I'm writing practice questions. It's actually a little easier than um, giving you just like blank questions because you already know oxidation reduction based on that. <laughs> the way I like to remember it is that I'm thinking about the flow of electrons. So the electrons from zinc is being given to the copper two ion, forming the zinc metal, and then the zinc ion, sorry, the copper ion is gaining those two electrons to form the copper metal. So it just goes electrode, whatever is in solution. This is the break of the two different beakers, whatever is in solution, the final electrode. So just a shorthand way for me to communicate across standard cell diagrams. And I'll pull it up so you guys can see what I mean with the questions that I've given you on your homework. Should have posted it. Here we go. There you go. Oh, number 10 got cut off funny. I'm going to have to fix that. So you see, that's how I've communicated across your practice problems. So just telling you, you have, like for the first one, you have copper and silver. Second one, you have zinc and tin. Third one, you have iron and silver again. We okay? So these are your practice problems. All right, you have the rest of the period to get those done. Uh, I would say work to the achieved level. We have, what is that, 15, 20-ish minutes. I don't think you guys probably want me to do the Marin Excellence today. We'll see how we go. Yes. Yep. Um, so with the paper towel thing, you could just write ions. Um, it could be potassium nitrate. It can be... Uh, sodium chloride, it doesn't really matter. It just needs to be an ionic solution that's unreactive. So I wouldn't be too fussed about it. Cool. All right, there you go.